Well, all right, all right, all right, and welcome back to another exciting episode of the Planet Gen X podcast. I'm Sean. That over there is Brian, and our back again is our special guest, Joel. Hey, thank all you for right. having me. Yeah, we're so happy yeah. to have you as always. Always happy, happy to have Brian back with us. And uh, yeah, man, uh, we are on the heels of the Star Trek Discovery um, review recap all that stuff we've been doing and and boy am i ready to get done with it i watched the last episode today and so i'm looking forward to wrapping that baby up come monday when we do our recording of that so y'all be a little on the lookout for that when it does come out and uh you know hopefully we'll be moving on to something bigger and better but before we get into anything guys i want you to please remember hit that subscribe button give us a thumbs up give us a like you know uh leave us a comment uh just remember that Hitting that subscribe button is free, costs you nothing. It helps us out tremendously. You know, even if you think I'm not going to watch these guys all the time, please just hit it for us because, you know, you're just doing us a favor on the way out. Maybe you liked something you saw in one of our videos. So please do that for us. Thank you so much, guys. So, yeah, we're getting out of the uh, Star Trek universe for a little while until something hopefully comes better along down the road. And moving back into the Star Wars universe with Star Wars Acolyte which we know almost nothing about. Uh, I was just saying earlier, I was looking at IMDb to kind of get an idea of a synopsis, and it's literally like a sentence, maybe two, uh, compared to the synopsis we read for episode nine of Discovery the other day, which was like a nice lengthy paragraph that you know eloquently told exactly what happened within the episode. So, you know, not a lot to go on. But uh, our buddy Joel is pretty good at scouring the internet and finding all the dirty, dirty here and there and what the skinny is on stuff. So hopefully he'll have some cool stuff for us. I do know that he did mention that there wasn't a lot of great uh, reviews so far. And it seemed like some of that was coming. The negativity, I would say, was coming from uh, the Disney camp itself or some of the producers. Right. Wasn't that right? Yeah. What you said, Joel? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You so, want to get into the Well, I mean, I think it has a lot to do with uh who it is and who the fan base is, right? That's that's really what a lot of this IP has come down to. It it does um I think what Sean is talking about though, uh Disney is been well themselves. That they're they're right. actually saying some bad things. And yeah. they really yeah, you know, it's a which it's is a weird. level that, yeah, it's a level that I don't understand. But uh, you know, I can, I can get into it if you like. You want me to go ahead and, sp and spit it out? Yeah. Well, yeah. Give us a shot of of the, uh, the synopsis and g give us a little idea of where we're at. All right. Um, so it's the acolyte. It's eight episodes this season. Uh, each episode is thirty minutes or less in length. The first two episodes, it's going to be aired on uh, Tuesday, June 4th, 2024 on Disney Plus. Um, it, it came in at around a hundred and eighty million dollar budget. Uh, it's created by, uh, written by and directed by the showrunner, Leslie Headland. That's a whole lot of hats to be wearing. Two episodes are credited for Leslie, similar to uh, our Fallout video. You know how uh, Nolan did the first three. Yeah. Um, Leslie did, I, I believe, I don't know which ones exactly she did because the show is not out yet. So a lot of this is speculation. Right. But m most of the inf information can be found from them or online. Uh, but she does get uh, two episodes credited. The other six are from different directors. Uh, Star Wars series that takes the viewers into a galaxy of shadowy secrets and emerging dark side powers in the final days of the High Republic era. That's a bit credit to uh, IMDb, the one sentence wonder there. <laughs> yeah. This is um, uh, this is done with uh, a, a pretty uh, the word is diverse cast. I think that's mm -hmm. the way the way I would put it. Um, a Disney it cast. Has, uh, yeah. Okay. Well, current current Disney. Uh, uh, yeah. Not past Disney. Current Disney. Right. More heavily Modern. cited towards the female persuasion than some previous Star Trek or Star Wars IP. Right. Like Star Trek, I will get you there, Brian. We're about to hit that 
hit that road. There are three main stars. Uh, the three main stars are Amandla, that's with an L, so not Amanda, Amandla Stenberg, uh, and then uh, Daphne Keene, and then Jody Turner-Smith. These are the three main stars of the show. Uh, Amandla and Daphne are credited for eight of the 30-minute episodes. Mm -hmm. Jody Turner-Smith is credited for seven of the episodes. Every other person... Uh, again, we haven't seen the series, so all I can go off of is what I see, you know, from their production notes and what IMDb has. So I, I can tell you the other cast members are either throwaway, they die, they're not uh, letting us know yet, you know, so IMDb is not posting it, but IMDb, IMDb is posting everything else. And so is StarWars.com. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I don't know why. So if you're going to get connected to three characters, well, you're going to get a Mandla for eight episodes. You're going to get Daphne for eight episodes and you're going to get Jody Turner Smith. Now, who are these people? Uh, Amandla uh, Stenberg plays what appears to be two roles. And we alluded to this in our little short clip. Uh, she she plays uh, May, uh, who is the dark side character, and right. uh, we don't we none of us still know how to say this, but it's Osha or Osa or yeah. Asa or maybe it's Asha. Maybe I don't know. Asha she's sounds good. Yeah, yeah, she's the light side character. Um, we know about this uh, due to the the. Uh, let's just, I'm just gonna say Asha. We'll say Asha. Yeah, maybe let's go with Asha. In the subtitles of the preview teaser uh, that was po posted to X, and then we 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 put a little bit up about that. Um, the they did correct that sense. They have, yeah. The previous role that I am aware of uh, that she was in, Amandla was in, uh, is Spider Man Across the Spider Verse, in which hmm. she did the voice actor work for the character named uh, Margot Kess, uh, Spider Bite. Uh, you may also remember her in the Hunger Games as the character Rue. Uh, I missed that one personally. Personally, but uh, yeah, um, it's here. there. Uh, <laughs> and if if you go to StarWars.com, uh, it lists May, a mysterious young woman with a tragic past. May gets swept up into a sinister mystery that puts her into the center of conflict in unexpected ways. She's determined to exact vengeance on those who wronged her, and little can stop May on her quest. So that's Amanda Stenberg. That's all we got. Uh, Daphne Keene. Uh, also eight episodes credit is going to be playing the character. And I hope I don't butcher this uh, Jedi, Jackie Lon, Jackie Lon, Jackie Lon, I believe. And we have seen her before uh, Daphne. We have in Logan back in 2017. She was the uh, character. She was uh, the She's a little girl played X. Yes. X 23, little girl in X 23. Yeah. Speaking um, of Logan, okay. uh, you know, I don't know if that, ever cleared your superhero movie thing or not if not you should watch it i think i have never watched it yeah it's worth a watch yeah it, yeah it's not one really, day it doesn't really feel like it's real quick movie. before you get on with it too i notice a the one character that sticks out or the one uh, actor is is jonas suatamo who's got two episodes playing kelnaka right that's cool yeah, he's the he, Kalnaka is our Chewbacca type character, yeah. the Wookiee. He's yeah. our Wookiee. So I, I don't know that you're gonna. He may could he could be there in the beginning and the end. We don't know. He could be you know he, right. in the first episode killed off in the second. Th this is and all it might be just a background part. He for all could we know. just be a background part. But yeah, you're but it is cool that for those that don't know that Jonas is who took over for uh, uh, Mayhew Peter Mayhew. That's right. Uh, as Chewbacca. And he That's does right. a fantastic job as Chewbacca. Right. And he trained he trained under Peter for a long time. I was going to say, it was directly from Mayhew, everything he learned. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So if anybody knows that he does, he makes all the noises for Chewie, just like Mayhew. So it's yeah. it's cool. He does it right. He was trained by the best. It was handed down. Yeah. And nobody does it better. But, Master yeah, to sorry. the student. <laughs> I just thought Absolutely. that was interesting because that was the only of all the people that was the only ones that really stood out other than uh, the the uh, Korean guy who I loved in. Uh, oh, I can't think of the name of it now. Squid Game. It's great. Right. Yep. Excellent. Yeah. Uh, so I like sorry. him a lot, too. I don't know. I uh, I really liked Carrie Ann Moss and like uh, the Daredevil stuff that she did. Oh, yeah. I forgot she was. In it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and of course we you know matrix was whatever uh, right. that was forever ago though um but you know there is not not everything she does is a hit but i i, I don't know this could go either way right 
it could yeah it, it could. Well, tell anyway you, with uh, the uh yeah i'll let you get right back to it but with the with the outlaw coming out you know and all the talk about it being uh heavily matriarchal just looking right off the bat at this it seems like that's just the cookie cutter for disney right now uh very diversified but very female heavy as well so this is the problem. There are more females looking for representation in the Star Wars universe. There are too many hands in the pie, and so it gets lost in the mess, it's lost in the sauce, right? Um, you know, it's fine to have more female leads and more of a matriarchal theme, even in my opinion. Uh, but you know, don't just give us these empty girl boss, girls get it done, whatever type of stuff, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, it's just like, okay, you gave us all this can you go back and give us something different or are you just going to do this from now on because that's what yeah, it seems I mean, like it does all feel the same right yeah that's what i, I, I got i touched on yeah. it a little bit in a second all right but, uh, well, let's touch let, on let me it. go back so where yeah. we left off was uh logan x23 right um uh, and daphne uh, Keen. now we're with jody turner no no still daphne uh it's still daphne, I, daphne. I had yeah i had seen a few episodes of daphne myself in an hbo series called his dark materials back in i was gonna say that was at the very first <laughs> yeah with uh james mcavoy uh hmm. which uh that was i mean it wasn't that big of a deal for her i don't think it because because it was hbo it was kind of behind a, a paywall type thing for people yeah. but uh, uh you may have seen her there uh jody turner smith uh she is completely uncredited on imdb as of today i don't know why but i if you go to starwars.com it uh it lists her as mother An anicia uh mother anicia is the leader of the mysterious covenant of witches on right, brendock say a witch yeah. yeah uh brendock who valued their independence uh as a pre preservation of their beliefs and power she's knowledgeable in the arcane of the force uh, previous credits for her include Murder Mystery 2. You might have seen that on Netflix. It was an Adam Sandler, uh, Jennifer Aniston. Uh, oh, yeah. Great movies. Uh, she played. Uh, it was two. It was a sequel. It was yeah. two. Well, I saw the first one. I don't know if I've seen yeah. the second one. But, yeah, she yeah. played Countess Siku, I think is, is who she played. And um, uh, before that, the only thing I had ever seen her in was was something my wife adores which is true blood she played Love one it. of the original sirens she played jody smith wow. one of the sirens on four episodes back wow. in 2013 season okay. six and um uh, imdb on the scene has covered quite a bit of this uh and we could talk about uh, some of the characters that are missing and you already mentioned one uh, you've got uh lee jung and I, i'm gonna say a because you don't pronounce the j on the last one i don't think but i'm not sure he's playing soul but he's not getting any credit and imdb is not listing him in any episode so if you get attached to the guy and you're looking at the credit line you know you're going uh well i don't know he could be in he could not be in you'll you have to find out by watching the show that some of the negative of us not being able to have you know exact reporting of his basic scenes but those three those three women are are definitely uh uh you know you can get attached to those you're going to see them for the bulk of the episode yeah i think episodes. well from the trailer you can surmise that you're getting a a flashback scene with him in it and uh, another one where he's clearly it's more recent time uh the hair is different and everything so uh it's quite possible he gets killed there is that scene where they confront that dark jedi and it looks like they about get wiped out so it's highly possible he loses his life but i think he is one of the high masters that uh is connected to may obviously since we're in the star wars universe i do want to remind you about two very beloved characters that got very little screen time right Biggs and wedge oh yeah. Biggs and wedge well, I, I think you're. I think this will be gonna, better than that. Yeah, I, I think <laughs> you, you probably have some. This is. I think this is a totally different direction. Yeah. Than pigs and wedge. <laughs> oh, um, and 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 I, I can tell you. Uh, and Boba Fett right, even. So let, let's start with the the nice of it, the niceties of it. 
from Leslie Headland herself in an IMDb DB on the scene video uh, at the Star Wars Celebration 2023 red carpet interview. Several of the cast were asked how much of the show is actually fan fiction. Most, if not all of them, agreed that it was all fan fiction. In response, Leslie on the red carpet says she did do a couple of RPG campaigns during the vid blip, if you know what I mean, and pretty much said a couple of those characters may or may not also be in the show. The fan fiction she wrote was pre-internet, she, she, she claims. So we're talking early 90s or sooner when she did this fan fiction. She says she was always interested in the female protagonists that leaned toward the dark side, being seduced uh, like in you know, the Obi-Wan situation by the dark side had a resonance to her. And some of that has ended up in the show as well. Uh, as, 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 as we can see here from them, uh, we know that uh, George Lucas, in an interview this past week, is, is already saying, this is not my Star Wars. And th this, the, I think some of this you're getting. Uh, this takes place in the High Republic era, which is changing the time on the show. And this allows the changes to be made to the canon in the past. And I'm like, uh, OK, it's similar to Doctor Who, you know, or Star Trek, where they went to the future or, right. you know, I'm sorry, Doctor Who didn't go to the future. It split. It, it split a timeline. Star Trek went to the future. This show is going to the past. So yeah, they're trying to get home. so far away from canon that they right. think they can be creative and or do whatever they want and blah, blah, right. blah. Yeah. Yeah. George in an uh, article with The Hollywood Reporter at the uh, Cannes Film Festival, uh, he's saying he's done with Star Wars and it's it's no longer his. And he in in quotation marks I've got here, it's called Disney Star Wars now, right. not Star Wars, Disney yeah. Star Wars. So you're talking about the man separating the you know courage from the way there. And I'm like, yeah, okay, did. you know that's 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 George. Um, we know that there is a, a retcon of the Force and how it works in general due to the interviews given. Uh, from several of the showrunners and the actors. The first trailer pops out, and uh, when the trailer com came out, it got uh, extremely, extremely Show bad trailer. ratio. Yeah, it, it went 700,000 dislikes, uh, 200,000 likes. It is the most disliked uh, trailer in Star Wars history. Uh, that That's a big deal. The mainstream media critics who got to see the first four episodes beginning last week um, – they are bulk positive, and some people refer to these people as you know, they were paid by Disney. You can, you know, come come in. You've got you've got to write a positive review. Blah blah blah. Uh, <laughs> the the other thing of note for the show itself is if if you're part of the um, uh, gay community, the first trans actor in Star Wars will be in this show. Um, yeah. Also, there's there's a slight bit of uh, nepotism. Uh, we have a character in the show with a, a lightsaber whip being played by Leslie Headland's wife. So, uh, if that tells you a little bit about this, um, it we know, we also know that the practical effects are heavy. And they're where we in That's Fallout, good. Brian, Brian and I had points about how they balanced well, and it's hard to notice the volume, but the volume's there. But you don't really, you don't really, you know, uh, you don't really see too much of it. We didn't get a lot of behind the scenes. We know it's happening, but we didn't feel like we were in a volume, you know, type of thing. So I, I think we're gonna see some volume shots that are probably, yes, yeah, probably. Well, it volume. depends on how much filter is on the screen. Uh, Could be. At the time of heavy sky, right? That's right. That's usually the determining factor of whether or not you can feel or see the volume. Play that right. trailer, Joe. Okay, and they they may have uh, an imbalance here as well. The uh, uh, this is a new trailer that came out today. Um, they they may have uh, a pretty pretty big imbalance with, uh, and you'll see it in this. So many lightsabers but tons of practical effects. So we may not get, there are a few candy eye shots here and there. We, we do see some things going on, but this, it may be too much practical effects. And, and are they spent all the money on the sabers? I, I don't know. And I was going to say, are these new sabers? There went the whip. Uh, these are, some of them are, some of, some of these are, are new. Yeah. Uh, Disney plus. 
Well, I just yeah. meant like the the base design for a long time. They've been well, you know, they had the originals and then they updated them. How many times? Oh, the, what I do think you mean they the, only did it like once or twice, right? Throughout. You're, you're talking, about, you're talking about using them on set. Yeah. Yeah, they've updated them quite a bit. Oh yeah, like well, six like, or I'm seven talking about times. Major overhauls. This was supposedly another major overhaul. Yeah, since the original to now, There's it's whip. major overhauls. Yeah. Bunch that's, of them. Uh, that's. Leslie Headlund's wife playing that character there with the whip. Well, my world is now complete now that I know that the first trans actor in Star Wars is getting a chance with this. I mean, I, I have to go and watch it now because that's all I've been waiting on my whole life is to know yeah. that the first trans actor is going to get their chance in Star Wars. And this show, not any other show, but this show. And that's what makes me super excited to see it. Yeah. The, uh, uh, most people are are worried about this imbalance uh, with the, with the uh, casting, and uh, they're also worried about it being Kung Fu Star Wars as well. I, I've heard that too, yeah. where we get way too much practical, and we we just don't it it doesn't land correctly uh, with the legacy audience, which we've spoke about before. How how you know you, tipping your hat to the people that came before you. I mean, it was a uh, wholeheartedly star wars was was not really a female property until kathleen kennedy took over uh kathleen kennedy has absolutely made sure that the uh, and she touts it you know the force is female we're gonna we're gonna diversify we're gonna have uh dei influences in here we're, we're going to make sure that everyone is represented except for it's a telltale sign just like i told you when you can look at the credits and you can go well there's a if there's a heterosexual white man and white woman, those people are probably dead unless they're an alien or in a suit, which the the chewy character, you know, the, the Wookiee character is in a suit, he, uh, you know, so you, you're you're looking at diversity. Sure, but not the representation of everyone. I, I think that's kind of false politics that we we see in so much other uh, but I don't have anything else. That's that's it. I don't want to go into the too much negative because uh Honestly, well, we don't I, know. I, I, yeah, yeah. I've seen negative from Kennedy. I've seen negative from Leslie, and I, I think it's on a level of unprofessional that that they shouldn't go to. Uh, I, and if you want to see something negative about the show, click on any video on YouTube that's not you know affiliated with Disney, and yeah, you you'll get it. So I, I was trying to give you lay of the land and where we're going to likely see things and and predict the future a little bit. Um, well, people you know, are pissed, man. Seen it. People are, are pissed. Yeah. They're they're tired of their shows. It's not just with Star Wars. We, we've said it already with Star Trek, with Doctor Who. People are tired of their their favorite series or show or IP, whatever. They're tired of it being monkeyed with, and they've gotten all of them. They've gotten all the top stuff, and they have absolutely destroyed it all. Um, and while I'm thinking about it, because we just had that whip up there recently, I mean, like, what what I wonder, um, what what makes a whip flaccid and what makes a whip hard are the lightsabers you know hard erect <laughs> I, i'm not sure I, I don't know if they even go into it is it I forced viagra do. it's like a a special crystal and a special hilt well i hope I, they I, they lay it out somehow because it just seems weird that you know you got traditional lightsaber got a nice erect lightsaber coming straight up and out and then you got this thing with the with the lesbian alien lady holding it and it's all whippy and limp like a noodle I, i'm not sure why they were trying to go this route but yeah uh, it it's could, weird it, it, we, we, we may find out I, I know the character originally you're not gonna know, know this unless you're a big fan but the, that character with the whip originally or, origin was actually 1977 she's in the comic books and uh right. i can probably well, yeah I'll, I'll try to find a link so you can see what yeah, she looked the, like the character Her, exists and is canon yeah is well is star wars canon not this you know this is her intro I, well it might not be her intro this i think she was in one of the animated series but if you take a look at the original design for this character back in 77 you'll notice the whip is 
a whip. It's got disconnected joints going through it. It's got lightning coming out of it in the disconnections hmm. that is the saber part. It's got a pull ability. And you, even in the comic book back then, I, I think I might be able to find a picture of it, but like holding your hand out like Vader does, you know, to choke somebody or something like that, you can crack this whip with, you know, the force, be force sensitive whip. Yeah. So it, it may have some connotation. I'll try to find something that uh, maybe uh, Sean can put up in post. But yeah, yes. this, the whip is not the same. But you're you're not wrong. This, this whip is uh, is probably not going to do that, at least that we haven't seen. But at least we're going to see the whip, but, you know, <laughs> it's probably not going to do that. <laughs> Yay! I don't know. It might be cool. But, I mean, listen, it just got a few points because it comes from the 1977 comic book, so it's not something they just dreamed up, you know. All right. So I'll give it that. And listen, I'm not going to be negative with Acolyte uh, or even, like I mentioned earlier, the the Outlaws game. Uh, we'll see. I have to wait and see and weigh it just like I've weighed and measured Doctor Who, just like I've weighed and measured Discovery. Every time something new comes out, you know, unless I and like found wanting. Yes, a lot of it found <laughs> wanting. Yeah, there's a reference there from one of my favorite movies. Um, you have been found Wanting, wanting, yes. Uh, you know, there's good stuff still out there. Strange New Worlds, uh, Andor. I can't wait for Andor to come back. Some type of Picard movie we're going to get. You know, these kind of things we know have been good. So hopefully they will continue to be good. Um, it's clear that not everybody at Disney has an agenda. Like, you know, uh, Favreau and uh, Filoni, now, Favreau's obviously. Out. You know that, right? Favreau's oh, no, out. I didn't know that. Oh, well, that sucks. Okay. Well, no, it's Favreau, all going Favreau, out. Favreau's out. We're not getting any more Mandalorian in the uh, Disney Plus era. We're right. not going to – not that we know of. Well, what we're getting is if we get it, it's going to be uh, on the theater. And so they've transferred him and the show. Well, I knew that. To the theater, and yeah, no, no more, I, no more yeah. Disney Plus versions. Well, there was the way you said that. The way you said that, Joel, movie, was a yeah, little so. misleading. Some well, how, how, uh, however, that's changed. Well, that's what I'm saying. The the money has changed. They've yeah. had a big loss in money, and I don't know if they're going to cut into Favreau. Um, Filoni is also done for the moment. Uh, Bad Batch is over. Uh, I don't know where it's going to go. Disney's bleeding money so I, I i can't tell you that that we're going to get another one i don't have any confirmation that favreau is going to return all the last rumor was is that we're going to and it, not really rumor they put it out uh they they said we're going to stop doing these shows on disney plus we're going to put it into the theater yeah they've said that before they've had creative differences with people and things didn't go down the right path of the road that they wanted it to go on and that's where we ended up where we are today um i don't i don't know that favreau is going to make it to the theater with their budget cuts and everything else that's going on and and it doesn't take much to research you know disney's track record at the moment um but yeah i mean i, I didn't want you to don't be it'll devastated be if you're just finding I mean, out now it'll be be fine. Honest, it's favreau have you seen chef uh, he can do yeah, pretty good. Yeah, job. he doesn't a need a huge budget. Yeah, it's cool. What's well, it'll be fine. Right, right. I'm not worried about it. You yeah, made me think he's left all together. <laughs> I guess we lost Joel now. All right, guys. Yeah, we had a little bit of a technical difficulty. We lost Joel. Happens every now and then. But uh, yeah, I mean, it really was at an opportune moment because I think we said everything we need to say about Acolyte at this moment. Um, yeah. We don't know a lot about it yet. We haven't seen anything from it yet, and I refuse to be negative about it, even though I know it's not in great hands. Um, I just want to wait and see before I make a judgment. Too too much, too often, people just judge everything without even seeing it first. Just you know, get an idea in their head that's going to suck, and, and, they, and then they force it to suck. And don't need that. I'm going to keep an open mind. I, I'm still trying to do that with Doctor Who. I, I don't think, I mean, I really at this point, it's, it's over. But Good know, luck with I, I try. I try. I do try. I'm not all negative about everything. So yeah. with that in mind, guys, I look forward to seeing Acolyte June 4th. The same as you, I'm sure. Uh, it's Star Wars, guys. What can I say? It is something that might be really cool for all we know. Look at the way Andor came off. You never know, guys. You never know. With that in mind. 
Look out for us on uh, Wednesday. We'll have the last episode of Discovery for you. And yeah, remember, guys, as always, be excellent to each other. And Brian, Joel, and I will see you on the flip side. Yes, yeah, everybody. Right. Yeah. Have a good one, everybody. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Peace out. <laughs>